just in case it wasn't perfectly evident by now, today I'll be reviewing Star Wars The Old Republic. The Old Republic is a mass multiplayer online role-playing game set in George Lucas's Star Wars universe, the release of which was nicely timed with the closure of the last Star Wars MMO. Ah, Padawan. I heard your shuttle arrive. I am Master Seo Bakar of the Jedi Council. Welcome to Tython. But anyway, let's start with the most important part. How the game handles and supports widescreen and multi-monitor resolutions. The Old Republic handles widescreen and multi-monitor aspect ratios fairly well, although its support isn't without flaws. Oh, Satya, what's wrong? I sense... a great darkness. Pre-rendered cutscreens render themselves to their correct aspect ratio, 16 by 9 while in-game cutscreens render horizontal plus across all three monitors. Likewise, in-game everything renders correctly on a multi-monitor system, rendering horizontal plus as well. The game does calculate its field of view from your desktop resolution, so bear that in mind when you set it up. Now for the flaws. As of writing, even though the user interface and heads-up display elements are correctly scaled, they are fixed to the edge of the screen. The only element of the UI that you can actually resize and move is the chat window, but since every other element has a fixed location there's a limit to where you can put it without other windows appearing over the top of it. Given that most other major MMOs allow you to at least move the user interface elements, Bioware and EA really have no excuse for not allowing the player to do that much. Better, now Dope Fish and Helifex from the widescreen gaming forum have developed a fix that will force the interface into the centre monitor, but since I prefer to keep my windows on the side monitors in MMO, I'm not using that in this video. My results were less than ideal, Master. There is no excuse for this failure. Since the widescreen gaming forum only requires that the user interface be scaled correctly and fully usable, Star Wars The Old Republic receives an A grade for widescreen and multi-monitor compliance. Before this council, I take from you the title of Padawan. I name you a full Jedi of our order. Honor the past. Work for the future. While the graphics might not look as pretty as some other MMOs, the stylized aesthetics work well in the universe Bioware has created. Frame rates don't suffer too much either under most conditions, even on a multi-monitor system. And once AMD get a crossfire profile ready for this game, I should get a smooth 60 frames per second most of the time. Will she fly? She's not pretty, but she's tough. The audio is also well done, with the familiar beeps and squeaks coming from the droids and the occasional incomprehensible babble coming from the aliens talking in their native tongue. Sound effects and music are pretty much what you'd expect from a game set in the Star Wars universe. The game has four basic classes on each side. Each class has two subclasses and each of those has three specialization skill trees. The Sith Empire has the Sith Warrior, the Sith Inquisitor, the Imperial Agent and the Bounty Hunter while the Republic have the Jedi Knight, the Jedi Consular, Troopers, and Smugglers. The four basic classes largely mirror each other between the two sides, however the subclasses do separate them out a bit. All of the subclasses have the ability to fill two roles in a party, although players can specialise in one role by putting points in that particular skill tree. The character creation system in the Old Republic is fairly basic for an MMO. You can choose between a number of races based upon your chosen class, but then you have a limited number of options to tweak the character's appearance. The, the game also has the annoying limitation board. of not allowing a single space in your character's name, and also forcing the case so that the first letter is a capital and the rest are all lower. This wouldn't be too bad if the game warned you it was going to do it, but it's perfectly happy accepting a mixed case name. We've cleared the board for you, Master Jedi. Good flying. Now that that's out of the way, it's time to talk about the gameplay itself. Firstly, I'll push over the space combat part of the game, because that's apparently what Bioware did. The space combat sections play and feel like they were just added in to tick a box, and while they're not that bad to play, you can clearly tell that very little effort went into them. To describe the gameplay in a nutshell, it's like Panzer's Dragoon in Spaceship. My shit! The main part of the game fares much better. The game and levelling is very much driven by the game's story, and each class has its own story that extends over the whole of the levelling experience. This will help keep players more engaged throughout the grind to get to level 50, which is the current level cap. What's more, all NPC interactions are voiced, which is unheard of in an MMO. These interactions include Bioware's dialogue wheel, and bookend the start and end of almost every quest in the game. For the most part, the voice acting is done well enough, although as always with voice acting in games, there are some less than perfect deliveries. Oh, my poor Rhea. She was my most valued possession. Why do the ancestors punish me so? 
quest objectives vary a little, but for the most part they consist of variations on go there, interact with this or find that, return to me. There are very few quests with kill x number of y objectives, however a number of quests do have these as bonus objectives. All story quests and a handful of normal quests also create a special player only instance, to allow you to complete your quest without interference from other players. These areas are normally bookmarked with a green force field. There are also heroic quests, which are the same thing except they're scaled to be completed with a party. As well as these, there are flashpoint missions, which are the Old Republic's take on dungeons, and operations, which are their take on raids. Gameplay itself is what you'd expect from an MMO. You select a target, you push a few buttons, and you try to make the other person's numbers reach zero before your own. That's oversimplifying it a bit, but it's still the core on how most MMOs play, and the same holds true here. The game does tend to group mobs together though, so it's rare to fight one on one. This can make crowd control more important. The Old Republic mixes things up slightly with your companion characters, which give you an NPC controlled character to help you with your quests. The companions do tie in more with other game elements as well, for example they're responsible for crafting, gathering, they also take part in NPC interactions and respond to your actions. They work a lot like they would in games like Mass Effect, which isn't all that surprising considering it's made by Bioware as well. Anyway, that about covers it. Whether or not the game is worth the large entry price tag, I'll leave up to you. Failing that, you can wait to see if they drop the price or introduce a trial scheme. Also, I'll be uploading a section of raw gameplay footage at some point later, so keep an eye out on my channel if you're looking for a more accurate video of the game's flow.